Cudlow, I'm David Asman, in for Larry Cudlow. Well, the president's hunter headache is getting worse by the day. New documents released by the National Archives show that Hunter Biden's investment firm traded more than 1,000 emails and other messages with Joe Biden's office during Joe Biden's time as vice president. Now, hundreds still remain hidden after the White House has cited executive privilege, claiming their release would, quote, disclose confidential advice between the president and his advisors. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's why they want them. This comes after reports the president may have used pseudonyms in more than 5,000 emails and other documents when he was vice president. Joining me now to talk about all of this is Greg Jarrett. He is a Fox News legal analyst, and of course, he's also author of The Trial of the Century. It's really the book of the century, about the trial of the century. And Jason Chaffetz, former Utah congressman, Fox News contributor, fellow at the Government Accountability Institute, and not to be outdone by Greg, also author of The Puppeteers. Gentlemen, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, so, Greg, First, the obvious question. Why would Vice President Biden use fake names on thousands of messages with his son? And, and another question, is it legal to do so? Well, Occam's razor. Uh, the most obvious answer is usually the correct one. You know, David, if somebody has nothing to hide, they don't hide their communications. But people who do engage in improper, if not illegal activities, well, you know, they often cloak them in the shroud of darkness. They seek to obscure their illicit behavior. Uh, Hunter was being copied on his dad's secretive emails that dealt with Ukraine, where the son was pocketing a million dollars a year, an astounding sum of money. And some of the shared communications were with then-President Poroshenko, who, of course, Joe pressured to fire the prosecutor who was investigating Hunter Biden and his company, Burisma. So, you know, these alias emails only solidify Joe's involvement in his son's schemes. But at the same time, he appears to be violating the Federal Records Act by trying to mask government communications so that they're concealed from the public. Right. And that leads me to the former chairman of of the committee that is going to be investigating all of this, the Oversight Committee, and that is in the midst of the investigation. Jason, since, since the, the, the Federal Records Act forbids the use of pseudonyms uh, in messages using government equipment, that, that is the proviso, and one might assume that some of these texts and messages were used uh, while he was uh, an, uh, officiating as vice president, is the Oversight Committee going to demand them as, as part of an, an impeachment inquiry? Uh, they should absolutely demand them. Uh, look, the, the use of the pseudonyms is used to bypass the Federal Records Act to avoid uh, scrutiny from a Freedom of Information Act. Uh, they're used to disguise who is actually involved and engaged in these communications. Not only is that nefarious in its intent, um, it, it, it shows that they really, truly want to hide something. But we went from Joe Biden saying that he never had a discussion to now Joe Biden having full and complete access of the White House and the vice president's office to Hunter Biden and all of his business associates. And that was what they were selling was the access and to have mm. literally a thousand plus emails. That's the allegation and communication and the interaction of being able to get clients into the White House, get pictures, meet people, um, the number of times Hunter Biden's business partners have actually met with officials in the White House, meeting with John Kerry, the Secretary of State. I mean, it, it, it is so over the top and unbelievable. And it's just amazing to me that every news organization in the country isn't writing about this yeah. because what other evidence did, evidence that they need? Well, and, and Greg, I don't want to get too much into weeds, but the, the fact is, is that the Federal Records Act does forbid the use of pseudonyms that mask identities if you're using a government device. I mean, there is a possible violation of the law in what Joe Biden did as vice president. Oh, absolutely. On the very first day, uh, top government officials receive a tutorial. And part of it, and that includes cabinet members, the vice president, part of it is that for your government communications, official business, you must always and exclusively use the government 
server, which is secure, and you're supposed to use your assigned secured email address. You, in fact, have to sign a document that says, if I don't follow these rules, I recognize that I can be prosecuted for it. So, you know, it, it's not enough for Joe Biden to say, hey, gee, golly whiz, I didn't know. Right. He signed a document saying he knew. But he that, went through the instructions it, on what to do. And ahead, one Jason. of them was, you can't use an alias or pseudonym. Right. Go ahead, Jace. And, and, and David, I, I want to also add here, Greg's 100% right. It also includes all of the staff. It's not just a one-way direction. If they're sending something to somebody and they know it's an alias, mm -hmm. they are party to that to the breaking of the law there. So everybody else that is copied on this, that is a government official paid by the taxpayers, that is a participant in this scheme, is also subject to the law. And mm -hmm. that is what needs to be uncovered by the Oversight Committee, the Judiciary Committee, and also should be prosecuted. Well, Greg, we do have uh, specifics on, because of the great reporting of John Solomon, by the way, who you uh, just wrote a piece about, he's, he's done incredible reporting, finding out that when Vice President Biden essentially fired that Ukrainian prosecutor who was looking into his son's business, yeah. uh, he, he, was, it, he was overruling the advice of a task force of the DOJ, Department of, of Justice, of Treasury, and of the State Department that sort of vouched for the person that he was firing. So by what authority and by what evidence did he override the experts who came to the opposite conclusion about this prosecutor? Yeah, the experts were the State Department, Justice Department, and Treasury Department, all of whom said, uh, don't fire the prosecutor. He's, he's doing great work getting rid of corruption. What does Joe Biden do? He defies the policy of the Obama administration, apparently to help his son uh, continue to receive truckloads of money. So, you know, this Burisma scandal alone contains compelling evidence of influence peddling, which the criminal codes describes as bribery, using your public right. office to confer a benefit in exchange for money. Burisma got a benefit yep. from Joe, a probe that suddenly vanished. His son continued to receive the payola from yes. Burisma. And you know, yet, so when journalists, David, claim that influence well, peddling is right, illegal, hold on a that's second. bunk, it's defined as bribery. Jason, and yet, despite what Greg just said about bribery and the evidence that is leading to that conclusion about everything we have, here's what uh, Jake Tapper and a Republican congressman, Congressman Buck, by the way, said the other day uh, about the whole investigation and whether or not there was any evidence or not. Roll tape. Obviously, we're not at the point where we're ready to offer evidence of impeachment, but rather just to start an inquiry into whether impeachment is appropriate. Yeah, I'm, I'm still not quite sure what crime uh, Joe Biden is to have committed. Not sure of what crime? I mean, it is pretty... He's been asleep. Jake has been asleep for the past couple of months because bribery is the name of the crime. It's not only a crime in federal statutes, it's a crime in the Constitution. Yeah, um, it, it, James Comer could certainly lay that out. We could lay that right out, out here on, uh, on Kudlow, as they have. I mean, on, on, you watch Hannity or Kudlow or these right. shows that cover these stories, Jake uh, needs to actually have, you know, a degree of, of, of intellectual curiosity because the evidence. What else do you need? You have emails. You have photos. You have text messages. You have Secret Service logs. You have money bank records, telephone records. Um, you have the White House now producing uh, more documents and admitting that they have documents they won't show to the committee. Mm -hmm. What else would be on your checklist to go out there to get, uh, especially when you have the flow of money going yeah. into the Biden b family business? When it's I hear the phrase that he would suggest that when I hear the phrase lack of evidence, I, I just want my head is going to explode next time I hear that. Uh, finally, Greg, I just want to talk about new questions about the DOJ and their interference with the investigations in Hunter over the five year period. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Weiss was the this, the. The, uh, the U.S. attorney, now he's, he's a, a special prosecutor, special investigator. Uh, let me just play what Merrick Garland said on August 11th about his so-called independence. Roll that tape. Mr. Weiss has the authority he needs to conduct a thorough investigation and to continue to take the steps he deems appropriate independently, based only on the facts and the law.
The appointment of Mr. Weiss reinforces for the American people the Department's commitment to both independence and accountability in particularly sensitive matters. Well, Greg, we now have emails that show that the Department of Justice was actually writing answers for Mr. Weiss that he was getting from Congress. I mean, there's just one after the other example of, of interference from the DOJ. Yeah, those emails show that Merrick Garland wasn't telling the truth when he claimed Weiss was independent. Every time Congress was sending questions to Weiss, uh, they get answered by Merrick Garland's DOJ. And the other thing they were asking about is this top assistant uh, attorney general uh, who apparently may have been involved in the Hunter Biden investigation at the DOJ, who had previously worked for the law firm defending Hunter Biden. Right. And then he eventually leaves the DOJ, yes. rejoins the very same firm defending Hunter Biden. Right. So in a conflict of interest, uh, was he recused? They won't really say. Um, but it's very suspicious that the fix was in at the DOJ. Jason, uh, they're giving me a rap. They started giving me a rap two minutes ago, but very, very quick answer on this one. Uh, when will we hear about uh, an impeachment inquiry? How soon? Uh, right after Labor Day, the House convenes. Uh, that's when they need to bring it up. Okay. And by the way, 2,500 pages of documents in a FOIA request, communication between David Weiss and the Department of Justice, can't tell me that they weren't coordinating. Jason, Greg, great to see you both.